Greetings, Nick with Sweetwater here, and today we're going to be looking at the sacred art of playing trills on the guitar. Let's get to it. seen and heard, a trill is basically a rapid fire burst of hammer-ons and pull-offs between two notes, just like this. Or this. Or this. Or even this. Trills are pretty easy to do. They must be. I can do them. They also sound really cool, and they're a great way of adding a little bit of excitement or momentum to a run, lick, or riff. See what I mean? The trills add something, even to a hack like me, and that's why music theory buffs sometimes refer to them as ornaments. Just like on a Christmas tree, they add colour and sparkle. Now, before we go any further, I should quickly point out that this lesson is not for advanced or intermediate players. Instead, this one is aimed at future guitar heroes of all ages who've just started out on their playing journey. Also, at this point of the proceedings, I should also point out that I'm assuming you've already mastered the art of doing both hammer-ons and pull-offs. You have, right? If you haven't though, don't fret, there are links to lessons on both in the text below. So if you don't know how to do either one, pause this video, click on said links, and then come back once you've learned both. They're not too difficult, I promise. Disclaimer stated, back to the plot. As already stated, a trill is a pick note followed by a rapid fire combination of consecutive hammer ons and pull offs. So it's literally one pick, then hammer on, pull off, hammer on, pull off, hammer on, pull off, and so on, without another pick stroke. The trill results from the flurry of hammer ons and pull offs that immediately follow that first initial pick. Let's do a quick trill between the C note at the fifth fret on the G string and the D note at the seventh fret on the same string to illustrate exactly what I'm talking about here. All you have to do is this. First and foremost, you fret the C note with your index finger just like this. Then, after picking it, you do a series of hammer-ons and pull-offs to the seventh fret on the same string with your third finger without picking the G string again, just like this. So it's pick, then hammer pull, hammer pull, hammer pull, hammer pull. So. A little bit slower. So, as repetition is the mother of skill, it's simply pick, hammer on pull off, hammer on pull off, hammer on pull off, hammer on pull off, and so on. As a result, a bunch of cool notes come out from one pick. Hurrah! And that, my friend, is what a trill is. A consecutive combination of speedy hammer ons and pull offs between two notes. In rock and blues, these two notes are usually in the same scale and also pretty close to each other, namely one or two frets apart, as you've already seen. Here's a quick descent of trills using the notes of the A natural minor scale on the high E string. And by the way, if you don't know this scale, once again, there's a link below to a lesson that'll teach you it. Anyway, that said, back to the lick. As you hopefully just saw, I started by doing a trill between the C and D notes on the high E string at the eighth and 10th fret, using my first and third fingers, just like this. I then shifted my first finger back a fret, and then did a trill between the B and C notes at the seventh and eighth frets on the same string, the high E. 
and scooped my index finger back another two frets and did another one between the A and B notes at the fifth and seventh frets on the same string. And then do exactly the same thing again, namely scoot back another two frets and do another trill between the G and A notes at the fifth and third frets, just like this. So, the first, third, and fourth trills were done between my index and ring fingers, and the second one, namely the one between the seventh and eighth frets, were done with my index and middle finger. Here's the whole thing again. And a little bit slower. Well, something like that. Oh, and just so you know, if you'd like tab for this lick or any of the other ones that are called out on the screen during this lesson, once again, there's a link in the text below. So you don't have to take notes. Just watch, learn, hopefully, and then look at the tab later. Dave Murray of Iron Maiden does consecutive descending and ascending trills all the time, and you can also hear the late great Edward Van Halen do a quick trill descent just before his game-changing two-handed masterpiece in Eruption, just like this. <laughs> I've read things in both books and on the internet that say trills are typically carried out between two notes that are only one or two notes apart on the same string, like this great classical sounding Gary Moore influenced E minor blitz. <laughs> As you just saw, all nine trills I played were between two notes, just one semitone or one fret apart on different strings. That said, you can obviously do trills between notes that are further apart, like this, or this, or even this. And by using an open string note, you can do trills between notes that are really, really far apart. Like these, for example. Hmm, just a tad sloppy, but you get my point. I've also read stuff on the Googles that say a trill should always start on the lowest of the two notes, but to that I say, boulder dash! If you want to start a trill on the higher of the two notes, then go for it, just like this. Or this. Both sound good, right? A trill is a trill, right? All we're doing here is starting our consecutive flurry of hammer-ons and pull-offs with a pull-off rather than a hammer-on. Simple stuff, but effective. Now a trill can be long and fast, like this. They can also be shorter and a little slower too, like this hammer-on pull-off, hammer-on pull-off triplet vibe run in the E pentatonic minor scale. Will this triplet feel pull-off, hammer-on pull-off, hammer-on pull-off ditty in once again E minor? And then of course, there's this one that you may well recognize The Trooper by Iron Maiden. They can also be really short, obviously. Literally a quick hammer-on and pull-off combination, like this one. A lot of players do these, like Brian May in a little-known song called Bohemian Rhapsody. Another guy who does little trills like this is Tony Iommi of Black Sabbath. Now, back in 1999, I was fortunate enough to work with him on his monthly Heaven and Hell guitar column in Guitar World. One of the columns he did was aptly called Just for the Trill of It, and it focused on his quite extensive use of trills. Now, one of the licks he showed me as an example for this column was this neat little E pentatonic minor one. <laughs> Yeah. 
Tony described this one as having a stuttering stop and start sound to it and stated also that it's something he does quite often. Now, if you take a trip down the music theory rabbit hole in the internets, then you might well find people referring to effective little trills like these as mordants or inverted mordants. Now, I'm far from being a music theory expert, not even close to be exact. That said, I can honestly say that I've never heard of these two terms before until now. To me, mordant sounds more like the name of a Scandinavian death metal band. Apparently, a mordant is a single quick trill between a note and the one above it in the scale being used, like this one. As you saw, I just went from C to D and back to C again on the G string at the fifth and seventh frets. Fire a hammer on and pull off combination. This is also sometimes called an upper mordant two, which makes sense because you're going up to do the trill note. An inverted mordant is the exact opposite, just like this. This time we quickly went from D to C, then back to D via a quick pull off, then a hammer on. This one is also sometimes called a lower mordant. Once again, makes perfect sense because the note you're going to is uh, lower. So, in the Brian May C minor ditty I just massacred, namely this one. In this, we're playing a couple of mordants, or should I say upper mordants to be exact. Here are the two. This theoretical truth stated, Mr. May refers to these quick hammer on and pull off combinations he does in the run as twiddles, not mordants. And as the man is not only an amazing guitar player, but also has an advanced degree in astrophysics, twiddles works for me. And as for the stuttering lick Tony Iommi showed me, he specifically called it a trill run. And if the godfather of metal refers to mordants as trills, that's more enough for a mortal hack like me. So not to overly confuse the issue, let's just call them little trills. Got it? Good. Case closed. And once again, at the risk of beating the proverbial dead horse, you don't always have to start on the lowest of the two notes you're doing a little trill between. You can also go pull off hammer on two, just like this Tony Iommi influenced E minor pentatonic stuttering run based on three little trills. <laughs> And if you're suffering an OCD case of wanting to be TC, TC being an acronym for theoretically correct, you could always call this one an inverted mordant run. Hurrah! <laughs> and there you have it, my friend. The simple but seemingly effective consecutive combination of hammer-ons and pull-offs that create the wonderful art of trilling. And call them what you will. Said trills can be long and really fast, short and a little slower, and obviously, anywhere in between. And just in case you've forgotten, as already mentioned, the tab to all 11 of the licks called out on the screen can be found in the link below. There's also an explanation of any relevant trill notation found in tab, and yes, even a little bit about those dreaded mordants too. Have fun with trills of all shapes and sizes. I'll be back soon. I'm out. See ya! <laughs>